Hey everyone, Two Angry Frogs back with AccuDroid, and it's time to upgrade the gear we obtained from all the world content we have done. The good news is, with Dragonflight, Blizzard has introduced one of the best gear upgrade systems we have seen in quite some time. However, this system can be difficult to grasp at first due to the way gear upgrade tracks work and upgrades requiring multiple different types of currency. So how do we best take advantage of this to continue improving our player power? Well, our goal with this video is to break down the gear upgrade system so it is straightforward and easily understandable. We will address what upgrade tracks are and how they work and overlap with one another, as well as the currencies required and how to obtain them. We'll also cover the Catalyst and Dragonflight tier sets in addition to how gear eye level impacts what we get from the Catalyst. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you always know what we're up to next. And thank you to everyone for your support. Now. Let's get into it. Hey gang, editor here. There's a lot of big scary graphics in this video that look really intimidating. And I'm here to tell you, you don't need to look deep into them at all. They're really just here so you can come back to this video for any information you may need, but all the specific numbers in this process, you don't need to know them by heart. For any segment that has some really useful info, I put a pause symbol in the lower left corner just to let you know this has some useful kit in it. All right. Back to the normal stuff. The Dragonflight gear upgrade system starts with the concept of gear tracks. Each track is indicated by a specific type of gear and sets a minimum eye level for that gear in that track and a maximum eye level that the gear can be upgraded. For Dragonflight Season 3, gear tracks include Explorer, Adventure, Veteran, Champion, Hero, and Myth. You can see the track for a given piece of gear by hovering over the gear in your character window. Below the eye level, the gear track is shown as well as the current upgrade level of the gear on that track. You will notice from the standpoint of eye level, the tracks overlap one another and this is where the system has a bit of complexity. Each track shares a set of item level upgrades with the next higher track. So for example, the Explorer track and Adventurer track share item levels, the Adventurer track and Veteran track share item levels, and so on. The Explorer, Adventurer, Veteran, and Champion tracks have eight available upgrades. Hero has six available upgrades, and Myth has four. So for Season 3, the upgrades at specific item levels follow this pattern. As an example, with Atku Druid's Neck and Cloak, we see that Adventurer upgrade level 6 is the same eye level as Veteran upgrade level 2. The key difference here is the track that the gear is on. So for example, even though Adventurer 6 and Veteran 2 are the same, Adventurer gear cannot be upgraded beyond item level 450, but we can continue upgrading a Veteran piece of gear to item level 463. Keep this maximum item level upgrade in mind as you're deciding on what piece of gear to equip or gear you may want to hold on to. Upgrading our gear requires two types of currencies, Lightstones and Dreaming Crests. Lightstones can be obtained through open world content, including events, world quests, gaining renown with Dragonflight factions, and completing campaign quests. They can also be obtained by completing Mythic Plus Dungeons and defeating raid bosses. You can see the current number of Lightstones you have in the Character Currency tab. One pitfall to be aware of here is that you can collect as many flight stones as you want, but you can only hold 2,000 at any time. So any flight stones you gain while you are holding 2,000 will simply be discarded. Always keep an eye on how many flight stones you have so you know when you are nearing the 2,000 cap and may need to spend some. Dreaming Crests come in four types, Whelpling, Drake, Worm, and Aspect and all can be found in your character currency tab. Each type of Dreaming Crest corresponds to the gear tracks they are needed for, and each upgrade requires 15 of that type of crest. So for example, to upgrade from Veteran Level 2 to Veteran Level 4 would require 30 Whelpling Crests. As we see here, unlike Flight Stones, the crest type that you obtain depends on the level of content you are completing. So for example, you can gain Drake Crests by defeating normal raid bosses and completing Mythic Plus Dungeons at level 6 through level 10, reaching specific renown levels with the Dream Wardens, and completing weekly events in the Emerald Dream. Now that we understand gear tracks and the currencies required for upgrading our gear, we need to talk to one of several item upgrade NPCs located across the Dragon Isles. These include Corxian in Valdraken and Kuzulth at the Central Encampment. When you talk to an item upgrade NPC, the item upgrade window is open. You can see in your character window and inventory all highlighted gear that can be upgraded. When you add a piece of gear to the window, 
It will show the current upgrade level, along with a drop-down showing all available levels for that piece of gear. The window also shows the eye level and stat changes for the gear as it is upgraded, and the total cost and flight stones, the type of crest needed, and the total crests of that type required. One thing to note about currencies is that you will get discounts at certain upgrade points. For flight stones after you equip a piece of gear at a given eye level, all future upgrades in that gear slot have a 60% discount on flight stone cost. You can see any discounts that you are receiving by hovering over the flight stone cost area in the upgrade window. This is account wide, so your alts will receive the 60% discount for any gear that your main character has equipped at a higher eye level. For crests, after you equip a piece of gear at a given eye level, all future upgrades in that gear slot do not require any crests up to the same eye level. Note that crest discounts are not account-wide, so this only applies to each character individually. The final gear upgrade topic we need to cover is how to take advantage of upgrading crests. All crest types can be upgraded to the next higher level. So for example, Welpling can be upgraded to Drake, Drake can be upgraded to Worm, and so on. However, to gain the ability to upgrade Crest, your gear has to meet certain requirements. To open each upgrade path, all of your equipped gear must be at the maximum item level for the track that requires that type of Crest. So in this case of Welpling Crest, all your equipped gear must be at 450 eye level or higher. This effectively tells the system that you do not need Welpling Crest for any further upgrades and can now exchange them. To upgrade Crest, talk to Vaskarn at the Central Encampment in the Emerald Dream. Crest upgrade cost is at a 6 to 1 ratio, so it costs 90 Crests to obtain 15 Crests of the next highest level. This is a great way to use those that you don't need anymore and provides a path to continually upgrade your gear. If you need, you can also downgrade Crests, such as trading Drake for Welpling. These have a one-to-one -one ratio, so for example, 15 Drake Crests would be exchanged for 15 Welpling Crests. A common question that comes up is when you should or should not use your Crests to upgrade your gear. In almost every instance, you can safely upgrade outside of a few corner cases. Aku Druid currently has Explorer Track Boots, and I might be worried about using currency in case I get better boots and wasting my Crests on the upgrades. If, for example, I know I'm going to be running a normal raid with the guild tomorrow, and normal raid bosses drop veteran and champion items, then it's probably best to wait to upgrade and see if I get an item to replace the boots, saving my crest for other gear upgrades. However, outside of those cases of knowing you are running content in the very near future that can provide gear at a higher eye level, there really is no benefit to not upgrading your gear. Another way of upgrading your gear and increasing character power is through tier sets. Tier sets in Dragonflight are sets of gear items designed for each class and specialization. When you equip two items or four items from the set, you gain a bonus that typically improves your character stats or adds power to a particular ability or set of abilities. To convert a piece of gear to a tier set item, you need to open the Revival Catalyst. Talk to Kazaro in Valdraken to receive a quest which will send you to Tearhold. After talking to Anuka and turning in the quest in Tearhold, you have access to the Revival Catalyst. All of your characters start with six Revival Catalyst charges, and each character will gain an additional charge with each weekly reset. So this is not something you have to share between your characters. When you activate the Revival Catalyst, you can look in your inventory and character pane to see what items are highlighted that you have and can be converted. To convert the gear piece to tier, drag the item to the Revival Catalyst. This will show what the resulting properties the gear will have if you convert it to tier. Gear items that count toward tier set bonuses include your helm, shoulders, chest, gloves, and legs. Other gear pieces can be converted to gain the tier set appearance for that gear slot, but they don't count towards the tier set bonus. There are two important things to note for tier sets. First, there is a new tier set with different types of bonuses for each season of Dragonflight. Only gear pieces that drop at 441 item level and higher can be converted to Season 3. All gear below that level is converted to Season 2 tier. So as we see here, Aku Druid has two pieces of Season 3 tier, activating the two set bonus for Benevolent Ember Sage's Guidance, and has one piece of Season 2 tier. The second thing to note is that not all gear that drops can be converted to tier set gear. Only items from Mythic Plus Dungeons, Raids, PvP, 
and items that you get from weekly events, such as the Super Bloom and World Boss, can be converted. You can also receive tier set gear in the Great Vault. A final note on the Revival Catalyst for tier sets. Only gear converted to Season 3 tier will cost charges. All Season 2 gear has no cost, so in this case you will not see available charges in the Revival Catalyst window. So in summary, there is a bit of complexity to it at first. But once you understand this system, it provides you with a lot of flexibility in how you choose to increase your character's power. As we talked about at the beginning, this is one of the best gearing systems we've seen in quite some time, and the team has kept true to their word of not drowning us with a bunch of borrowed power systems. With the ability to upgrade crests, you can work toward continually upgrading your character over time. However, one thing I would like to see from the WoW dev team is the crest exchange rate reduced as we're moving into the end of the expansion. For this final patch, let new and returning players really take advantage of the system. Let us know what you think down below in the comments, and if there's anything you would like to see in future videos, be sure to let us know, and have a great day.